Hi, I'm Joe Paiva, CEO of GeoLearn. I'm sitting here with Gary Kent, who is one of our faculty. Gary's just spent the last couple of days videotaping a number of his courses on Alta ACSM land title surveys. Now that he's finished, he's relaxing by giving us a little bit of his viewpoints on life in general and, of course, about surveying. Hi, Gary. Thanks so much for doing all this for us the last couple of days. My pleasure, Joel. It's very exciting. So I thought I'd uh, make, uh, make it a little bit easier for you on this uh, little discussion here by asking you, what got you into surveying? I was, when I started college, I was going to be a physics major. I had taken physics in high school, which was a little unusual at the time. I got into, went to my first physics course in college, which was basically a repeat of what I had done in high school, so I fairly quickly got bored with that. My grandfather was an engineer, actually a well-known engineer, a civil engineer. He was American uh, president of the American Public Works at one time. My mother thought I should be an engineer. He thought I should be an engineer. I decided to go into civil engineering, and the very first course I took was a surveying course, and it was taught by Warren Marks, who was at Purdue at the time, and he was just an outstanding gentleman and very, very intelligent, very well spoken. And I took that course, and I said, "This is what I want to do." Well, that's great, Warren Marks and Purdue. That's a good combination. That is. So, what do you do at uh, at uh, Schneider? I know you you are employed there. Yes, I've been there 31 years. I had a number of positions there. I started out as a project manager. I ran our survey department for a number of years. It got much bigger than what I wanted to be involved in management. It was, got to be probably about 100 people. I decided that really wasn't what I wanted to be doing. I wanted to be more directly involved in surveying, so I asked them to remove me out of that position so I could be more hands-on in surveying again. And so what I do now is I am a project manager. I manage projects. I do a lot of uh, client contact. I also have a number of uh, safety responsibilities. I do training. Uh, I also do quite a bit of expert witness work. And I do this sort of thing. I do seminars, which is part of what we do. We, we, it's a marketing uh, strategy on part of the company. I know we, we talked between breaks, and you talked about your enjoyment of education and being able to do that well, even in things like your expert witness work, which is one of the reasons we identified you as one of our premier faculty, because we think your courses will be very popular with us. Um, so just off, um, completely off surveying, uh, what do you do for recreation? Well, I travel a lot, part of what I do in seminars, but I very much like traveling, and I've been to Europe three times, I've been to all 50 of the states, when I have the opportunity, I like to go places or stay at places that I can uh, and spend extra time. In a few weeks, I'll be going up to Anchorage and Seattle. I've been to Denver this year. Uh, so I like traveling. I also enjoy reading, uh, read a huge variety of different types of things. Uh, and I enjoy music, uh, art, uh, theater. In Indianapolis, we have a very active cultural community, and even though I live 20 miles out of town, I am downtown almost every weekend uh, taking in shows and music and that sort of thing. Now, you haven't mentioned bicycling yet. It's a good point. I do bicycle. i not a serious bicycler, but I have a fairly serious bike. At least it was a top-of-the-line bicycle in the 80s. I, I, it's a road bike, and I do try to ride as frequently as I can just, to, just for exercise and for fun. What got you involved with ALTA ACSM surveys the way you have? I know that uh, you head up a committee on the ACSM side, or the NSPS side, NSPS I guess I should say, but also I know you are a member of ALTA and I believe you head up the committee on that side as well. Yes. So when the two groups meet, do you kind of switch chairs depending on whose who's, uh, position you're, you're voicing? Yeah, it's, that's an interesting thing. I originally became a member of ALTA because the previous chair of their committee had retired 
And they really wanted somebody who understood the survey side and they didn't seem to have anyone. So they asked me if I wanted to be the chair of their committee. And I said, sure, I, I think I would like to do that. And I said, what do I need to do? And they said, well, you need to join the organization first. <laughs> so I did and I, I very much enjoyed. I, I don't feel like I have to change hats when I'm there. Uh, I think there, are, there is a misperception in the surveying community that somehow this is a, um, you know, a negotiation that goes on and sometimes we're kind of beating each other up on wording, but it just isn't, isn't that way. In particular, I think as chair of the committee, both committees, I have a responsibility to um, have a really intimate understanding of the title side of things. And I understand surveying pretty well, but I've, I've worked really hard to be a student of title insurance so that when we're talking in a joint committee, I can understand when they're saying, well, we have these issues, I kind of understand that. So I probably almost play a neutral role when we have joint meetings. Now, I know you travel around the country a lot, teaching seminars, workshops, and so forth. In fact, it was quite a job to get you to juggle your schedule to come here to do these two days of recording. Um, tell me a little bit, at least when it comes to surveying topics, including ALTA ACSM surveys, uh, who are the non-surveyors that you also try to communicate with in your seminars? I have spoken to land title associations in three different states. Uh, I very much enjoy when I go around the country, uh, many times the programs I'm giving are not necessarily aimed directly at surveyors, but they, the, the provider may market them to surveyors, to title people, to attorneys. So frequently there are a number of attorneys in the programs that I'm presenting. I also, as I said, involved with the International Right-of-Way Association, so I'm frequently giving talks that involve perhaps uh, land agents, uh, right-of-way right agents, or landmen, or uh, appraisers, uh, people like that. So it's usually the people who are kind of around the periphery of surveying and interact with surveyors. And I, I really enjoy talking with them because so often, as you know, there's misperceptions about what surveyors do, why we do things. So I find it very helpful and interesting to engage with them. You are one of the first faculty to record at GeoLearn, very much in the formative stages of GeoLearn, and we are learning a lot ourselves as we try to do this GeoLearn thing. So uh, while you have been on TV in, uh, for interviews, you've done some courses online, I know you do a lot of webinars, and you told me you also did some radio and TV in high school, um, how has this experience here at GeoLearn been in terms of enjoying it and whether you felt like you were accomplishing something? I really enjoyed my last two days. Uh, I can't say that I was uh, feeling stressful about it, but you, know, you don't know going into a new situation and dealing with the cameras and such, but I really enjoyed it. And, and again, it's part of my interest in teaching, just a different format, kind of trying to teach uh, to the camera in a sense so that somebody who's watching the course is going to get the benefit the same way that somebody might in a in a person-to-person a, a -person in a classroom. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good experience and, and hopefully our courses will reflect that. I'm, I'm confident that they will. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to doing more of it. Well, uh you, you will be, I think, a very good example for many of our other faculty who will be coming soon. We know some of them are a bit apprehensive about the whole thing, even though they're excellent speakers on the topic, certainly when they speak at conferences. So we are hoping that when they see what you have done, they'll get some encouragement out of it. Uh, now that you're doing this with us, uh, do you see cutting back your travel schedule and teaching less uh, live courses? You know, I, I actually do see that, uh, partially because I'm getting involved in this, partially because, and I think part of what you all are doing with GeoLearn and what we're doing with GeoLearn is a function of what's going on in society and in continuing education, that we can like it or not, we can, we can, uh, we can push against it, but we know those are the trends. And so I think for several reasons, I'll probably be doing some less of person to person, particularly with some providers. I think the state surveying societies are always, you know, they always have their conferences, they always want people there, and you do a lot of that yourself. 
But I think otherwise we're going to see a, a gradual shift there. So I suspect we'll see more and more of this, particularly quality type of things like what we're trying to do here at GeoLearn. Well, thanks for spending all this time with us and for subjecting, uh, uh, allowing us to subject you to this interview. Uh, I'm going to close by just uh, telling everybody that uh, hopefully you got uh, something out of this uh, little bit of background information from Gary that maybe you don't even get when you see him at one of his uh, conference presentations. And if you can think of any questions you'd like us to ask him on a future visit, We'd be more than happy to do this again because uh, we plan on interviewing all our faculty when they come here. And with that, we will sign off.